Welcome to the Totally Awesome Outdoors Show. Now here in the UK, there's one thing that I love about the outdoors. In the winter, when it's raining and windy and cold, and that's coming, yes, indoors. It's all very well being out there, but when you get cold, you've got to come in and get warmed up. How are you going to get warmed up? Well, one of the best ways is with a log burning stove. I'll try and give you a few tips and pointers, because for me, I would never change from them. They're great. I've always had open fires. Once you change to a log burning stove, I don't think you'd ever go back. Now, there are typically many different types of stoves around and very modern ones as well. They're extremely efficient. This is a very small log burning stove because the problem is they are so efficient. You will be tempted to have one three times the size of the fireplace. If you're having a fireplace built as we did, You've got plenty of space, we could have gone wider, but I was told when I initially bought one, they are very, very efficient. If you have one that's too big, it will actually overheat the room. So, something to bear thinking about, ask a professional engineer who supplies log burning stoves, the right size of log burning stove for your property and your initial room that you're gonna put it in. Some properties might be lucky enough to have a couple in their different rooms, different areas of the house. They are made of metal, cast iron metal. They have a door with obviously a heat resistant door there and a venting system. Some of them are different to others. This one's got a venting system, just let air suck in at the top. You can call it an accelerator. It's a throttle if you like, the same as a car. It's got a good locking cap and it has to be sealed around here on the inside. It has, in this particular model, starting vent. All fires need oxygen to get started so that's the one I open, open it for when I initially light it, crank the throttle right down as you would do when you start a car, I suppose, if you want to go really fast and get wheel spin. That's what I'm trying to do effectively with the fire. Get it burning hot, get it burning quickly. As soon as I get it going, say, say a minute, two minutes with this, I close this one, okay, and then this vent at the top here, put it that way, I show you, you can see it opens a variable amount of oxygen into the fire and it burns extremely efficiently. Now what it also does, if it's burning properly, it actually burns the smoke. It's much more efficient than coal. Now this vent at the top, you can see, is fully adjustable. It allows different degrees of oxygen and air to get in there to burn, so you can adjust it over here. And more important, it's got a seal around here, which I'm gonna show you. This is a seal, it's like a rope, it's almost, it's almost like a, a very, very soft rope. And about every year, about once a year, sometimes twice a year, can we get more wear on the hinge side, because that's the greatest pressure there. You can, you can just pull this all out, peel it off, go and buy some new rope, it's not expensive, it's not, pop, it's got to be the right rope. I'm calling it rope, I don't actually know what they call it. That's a, that's a, it it's just like a coil of rope. And you can glue it in there with a special adhesive close it like this tight and that seals in here and you don't get any smoke or toxic chemicals coming into the room. If it starts to get very loose, like that one is gradually getting sort of three quarters of the way through the winter here in the UK, all we're going to do is peel that out, do it oh, in 15 minute job, that's all it takes, let it all set and then it's you know, basically it done. Um, you've got flaps here you can, you can, you can take out, you can remove I actually go in there with my hand at the back, roll your sleeve up, because it's soot, get yourself a dust mask, and I can actually scoop out a lot of the soot in there at the end of the season, end of the burning season. It's also got blocks here, I'm gonna call these fire bricks. Now you can get dual burning stoves, some that will burn coal and will burn wood. I didn't go for that, I wanted, because coal makes a lot of smoke. I wanted a sealed, efficient unit, so I went totally for the log burning stove. But here's the kicker. They are not cheap to purchase. They are not cheap to have fitted. You think, oh, I'll put it in any room. No, sir, you cannot put a, a log burning stove in any room. There will be uh, regulations in whichever country you're in um, of the slab you're gonna burn it on, the outside. I mean, this was the original open fire here. So there's a natural chimney, but the flue is a stainless special flue that goes up inside. Those alone aren't cheap because they have to be totally sealed because it's always a fire hazard if you know, you've know you got a totally uh, a log cabin or something like that. It's got to be done properly 
by professionals. I would suggest if I paid £800 for the stove, it would cost me more than that for the flue liner and a certified installer to fit it properly and pass it, because it has to be passed. It's got to be sealed up, but boy, is it good when it does burn. They are really one of the best features you can have in a house if you've got large rooms as well. You got It's aesthetically pleasing just to watch a fire. I've always liked to open fires anyway. But the safety factor, you, I can't tell you how many rugs we burnt years ago, not burnt on fire, but probably damn near on fire, burnt with bits of coal and bits of wood spitting out uh, onto the uh, from the hearth, bouncing across and going, and we all sit there watching TV going, has somebody been making some toast or what? Wah! Quick, get the tongs, the fire's on the floor. Doesn't happen, it's all sealed in here. Everything stays inside. The other thing is, and I'm not selling these, I'm just trying to tell you what they're like, log burning stoves, if you haven't had one. Being metal, they'll take a while to heat up, but once you get the fire going well, within possibly 20 minutes, this is really, really hot and radiating heat in its own right. These reduces the carbon footprint from the original open fire by about 14%. I mean, it's a, it's a lot. Also, the amount of CO2 it releases into the atmosphere is about, they say, the same as the tree absorbs as it grows, so it should be sort of fairly balanced out. And an open fire, if it has an efficiency of, say, 10 to 20%, whoa, hang on, a properly installed modern log burner has a heating efficiency of up to 85%. In the UK, they say that over a million households have now got these you know, log burning stoves, but you need to get them swept. I sweep mine about twice a year if we're burning, if we have a bad winter, and it's worth doing. I can do mine myself because I have a single story building. I just go up on the roof and I've got my own rods I can do it with. If not, get a certified chimney sweep because the inside, if you let it build up with creosote, because you're burning wet wood, or you know what you burn is important of course you're going to get a tar build up you've got a fire hazard risk and undoubtedly your chimney sweep will tell you that so get it swept properly or do it yourself properly well, you know i wasn't going to replace that but i thought you know it's so cheap to get this ceiling rope as i call it so i've been to buy a bit more ceiling rope. i'm going to take that out and fit it in so you can at least see it because here is the is, is the place that it pinches on that hinge there where it gets crushed most and it's just starting the fibers to break away there it's been used all winter i've still got a couple of min months of uh, winter to go so i figured i'd i'd do it and i've got a couple of different uh, adhesives here let's get the specs on these i'll tell you what they say about them uh, they're both like paint on ones so i'm going to clean this out and what i'm going to do is paint this on first in the groove there now you can't do it in one big piece, you have to have a join, which is sort of unfortunate because it's a pain to cut the end of this stuff. Uh, but you can see, there's got to be a join somewhere, so I'm going to follow the format I've got there. This one's called Stove Rope Fixing Adhesive. I'm going to give you the brand name. That one you can just paint on with a brush there. In fact, probably, who knows, it's probably both the same stuff. And this one is a high temperature rope fixative. Okay, that's what it says here, and... Is telling me, my goodness, it goes up to 800 degrees there. So basically this particular uh, tub, again, comes with a little brush, you can see it there. There's a little brush, almost like a sort of a honey, honey sticky consistency really. And that goes around the edge here. You put it on and you give it whatever it tells you on the different maker's tins, about 15 minutes this one. Just let it tack off dry and then I close it and the heat from the door cures the rest and seals that and it absolutely goes nice and hard. That gives you a sort of uh, a smoke tight seal, I would guess that's what you would call that around there, so that it sucks air through these vents and burns properly. Let's clean this out and don't gouge it out. I'm going to use a rounded knife to do it as well. Get it out and clean it up and then we're away. Just tease it away by using a rounded knife I'm not gouging anything and it is cast anyway it's metal isn't it so I'm not going to do it too much damage but I want to do it as neat as possible clear all that surface off there it comes off pretty easy as you can see the other thing you want to do if you get uh, a residue of any glue there you don't want to chip it too hard just get yourself a wire brush cordless and run it down the channel there because a lot of wire brushes this shape ideal for the channel there 
you put a little mask on if you don't want dust in there and clean it right back to the metal. The glue will take better. Okay, you've got the end there, which can start to sort of flare up a little bit on the fibres. So get the sellotape, or scotch tape, I think some people call it. Just roll it around once. Snap it, but just fold over just the tag end a tiny bit so that you don't uh, lose it and have to fight for it again. A pair of sharp scissors. Cut through the middle of the sellotape using the throat of the scissors. Like that. C'est le voila, French speaking versions available. Then you don't get that fluffy end breaking up. You get a nice neat end, which can butt in nice and neat to the vertical I'm gonna to have to put in here. And it's gen gently, carefully unroll that tag end of tape, and you've got a nice neat cut there to go across. Right, let's get this on there and make sure you've got enough to go round of the rope around the edge. Don't cut it till you get it right the way round and cut it at the end there. center at the bottom having put all the glue in there and just push this rope which is it seems oversized you, there's several different sizes of rope in fact there's two or three different sizes obviously depend on which country you're in and what lock burner you're using so make sure you get the right diameter rope you don't want it too thin smoke will get in you don't want it too thick you won't be able to shut the door and that's just push it in there nicely and I guess the rope soaks up that special glue and then when the fire next get, it gets hot it actually must sort of cure it. Be careful on the bends there you want to get it nice and neat and push it well in there so it's nice and tight in that slot. There we go that's the perimeter done. It actually takes longer to uh, put the glue on it does actually to push push the rope in the gaps. Now same principle at the end. Now I'm not too worried there if it does fluff a little bit because that's going to bond I hope. Now fuse together there. Those two. Just like that. There we go. Now just put the middle spar across there. And that's ready for drying. When you get a little gap like that, I'm just going to bond some glue over the top of it. And just push it down with a knife. So it bonds some of the fibres together. Well, you can see that's all in place there now. And it just makes life a lot easier. It's all sealed up. Just let it dry off. And the fire will cure the rest. So what exactly would you think of burning in a log burning stove. Yes, you think of burning wood. Do not burn anything like rubbish, garbage, plastic, anything but a little bit of newspaper just to start it with. You cannot burn rubbish in there. You cannot burn coal in there. It's a log burning stove. You cannot burn green wood, which will make smoke. Smoke makes creosote. Creosote lines the inside of the flue. The end of the flue gets tarred up. Potential fire hazard. It will be inside the flue naturally, but you don't need it. Don't burn it, obviously anything plasticky at all, nothing flammable, because again, big problems. It's called a wood burning stove or a log burning stove for the simple reason. It burns logs, it burns wood. Now, of that wood, do not use damp wood. Again, an inefficient working fire. It's just, if you've got 50% moisture in a log, it's working at 50% less efficiency. That's how I see it. You don't want it, you want it dry. Now they say, Leave your wood seasoned and dry for one and a half years. Well, that's a long time. I work on the principle that I do have a system of drying my own wood as well. You can use pallet wood, providing it's dry. 
but you've got to keep it dry. You can't use stained and treated woods because they could have toxic chemicals in them as well. You just want plain, simple pallet wood like this. I like pallet wood, cheap, free, except I'm putting a bit of a carbon footprint down, aren't I? We're using an electric saw to cut it out with. But I believe the kilowatts that I burn and save on the fire far outweighs the kilowatts that I use, or partial kilowatts, using my little reciprocal saw to cut it up with. So, pallet wood, nice and dry. If you can get it free, ask first. Probably one of the best you can get. These, the actual block from the pallet, blocks are brilliant. If you can line two or three of those up in there, they almost look like coal blocks, really. You can also get a wood pellet. You can, as some countries actually have just wood pellets, you know, that they, they make specifically for log burning, wood burning stoves. You've got trees, obviously, which you've, you can find some logs. Don't use rotten wood, don't. Some fallen wood's okay, but you know, generally if you tap it together and it sounds, it's nice. If it's a dull sound, it's probably got water in it. It's, it's a nice sharp sound that's good to do, uh, good to burn. Now, what I do is out in the shed, I'll take you out there and show you, I keep two heaps. We've got a bit of ground around us, we've got trees, we get falls, we actually do trimming ourselves with the trees. I split these logs down, I put them on one side for one year, and I will not touch those till the next year. I'll show you outside, and you can actually see the difference between, say, this year's logs and almost one and a half year's logs. They certainly burn better, they no question, the drier you keep the wood, the better the burn the better the fire, less smoke, more heat, and let's face it, if you've been outdoors all day enjoying yourself, you want to come in. Right, next stop. How do you actually get it started? You'd think it'd be easy? It is when you know how. Best way to light log burner, just ordinary newspaper. Not glossy magazines or Christmas wrapping paper, slippery paper, cardboard, plain newspaper. Do not... Ball it up tight like that. It won't be able to grab the oxygen. It won't burn. It won't get started properly. Just screw it up into loose balls and nestle them down to make yourself a nice base. Do not pack it too tight. Okay? You want a base there. That's all you're looking for. To loosen it up way too tight. You just want yourself a nice base. Okay? Then you want a layer of kindling wood, which could be pallets, cut down, thin, small, so the oxygen can get around those strips of wood and get them burning to give you that starting point. I'm going to be using kindling wood that I've already split down here. You can buy it, you can buy it, of course you can buy it. Obviously, if you're anything of an outdoors person, you're going to be doing it yourself. And I'll just lay a bed of kindling wood over the top. Again, has to be very, very dry to get the quickest burn to get it to take straight away. Just layer it. I just like to leave a little bit at the front sticking out like that. That's more than enough. You don't need a lot to get these going. And then a layer of thin pallet wood. I don't use a log straight away. I like to use a thinner pallet wood just to get me that initial burn. Rest it over the top like this. The idea is not to have it smouldering, you want it to burn. The faster it burns, the quicker you'll get the heat. And this one should be away. Do not use anything on there except paper and wood. Now then, because I've lit obviously several thousand fires in my lifetime, the chances are because I'm filming this one, it won't light. What I do is try and light two or three places along here as quickly as I can, so they're all going. I don't actually, you know, sit and watch it. I close the door quickly, open my main air vent, the starting vent at the bottom, open the vents at the top, and let it do its own thing. Because as I shut that, those flames will start to suck oxygen from the bottom, and that will create the burn at the top. Now, if it does go out, it's going to be smouldering. I personally suggest leaving it out. Just forget it for the night. You're going to have a room full of smoke otherwise. You can also, if you want to get it going, use some bellows here. You know where you, it sucks air in through the vent at the back. You can still buy these. This is a very old pair I've had. Um, air goes in through there. 
comes out through here. I've actually put a copper nozzle and flattened it so that I can get in there and get those going. And obviously sometimes it does burn down, you go and answer the phone, you come back, it's down. I put some wood on, I actually open this vent up and I can get it going slowly by fanning through here. Okay, so that's another little tip for you. My grandmother, I think, first taught me about bellows. She had a very good pair of bellows herself. It was called my grandfather. Let's get this started, see if it will take. Don't use any accelerants or anything in these log burners. It's just dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. Right, it's going, two seconds. Shut the door, you can see these flames immediately start to, in fact, I can hear it, I can hear a little roar there as it starts to go. That's gonna fire away, that should take within 10 minutes. The important thing is to let that first burn take hold of the kindling wood. Once the kindling wood catches hold, it'll gradually eat its way up into the slightly bigger pieces of pallet wood, but it's gotta be dry and it won't be long before all that wood is burning. And as you can see there, it's orange in the embers, it's white on the wood. You can start putting logs on there. You can see red glowing embers, you can see the white ash of the wood, orange of the flames, and you can see a clean burn, a nice clean burn. And that's exactly what you should have if your log burner is working properly. And listen people, the secret to having a good log burner is to have good logs. I keep them out in the store and I keep, this will be, this heap here you're looking at now, that is this year's cut and that's going to stay there for exactly a year so it dries out, gets rid of any moisture whatsoever. That I will not use until the following year. On the other side, I keep, is what I've been using from, well, 18 months ago. So on the right hand side there you can see you'd be a job to tell the difference. The right hand side is the new wood, the left hand side is aged over a year old. I also keep my pallet wood in sacks in another shed. Now I can put those in plastic sacks because the pallet wood is all cured. It's been around for years, the pallets obviously, so they're all dried out. No chemicals, no paints, no stains, no nothing, plain pallet wood. But do not put wet pallet wood in these sacks they will just rot, they will just stay damp, they will not burn properly. And of course, keep your kindling wood dry in the same shed, in the same log store. So there you go, I hope you guys have, uh, have, have learned something there. You know, if you've never had a log burner before, it's aesthetically pleasing. A log burner throws out a totally different type of warm heat to any other appliance. It's natural, it's a clean burn, once you use one, I don't think you'd ever turn back.